Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is Raffel and today I will share with you three of my favorite legendary builds. All of these have been tested multiple times on legendary runs and I've come to the conclusion that they're actually pretty good, pretty fun to use and if I saw somebody in my group running one of those builds I would be happy. With that being said, keep in mind that I have uploaded plenty of legendary meta builds on my channel in the past, so I will not include those builds in the video. I was going back and forth on this, should I include builds I have already posted on the channel, should I not? The Negotiator's Dilemma build that I uploaded just 3 weeks ago for example is hands down one of the best DPS builds for legendary missions and I would love to include it in today's video, however I felt like I would let down my followers, my subscribers who have been following and watching my builds regularly by now providing new ideas and just re-showing the same build. So all three of the builds that I'm about to show you are new and I haven't showcased them on my channel before. In case you want to go and check out some of my previous videos like the Negotiator's Dilemma build or the three meta builds video I did a couple of months ago which has three Pretty much the three meta builds that exist right now, uh, one skill build, one heartbreaker build and one rep build, all those are going to be down below in the description. Last thing before we start, I will not show each piece of each build individually, only the ones that really matter, otherwise the video will end up being longer than 20 minutes and we don't really want that. So let's get into it. For the first build we have an amazing rifle build that hits like a truck, classic M1A with damage targets out of cover on it and the talent boomerang, an 8x scope so we can use the focus talent on our chest which will provide us with a 50% increased weapon damage. In case you don't like playing with the 8x scope, you can always change the glass cannon which will offer you 25% amplified damage but it will lower your survivability by a lot. By comparing these two, I came to the conclusion that I prefer personally focus just because it grants me a little bit more survivability than Glass Cannon does. On the backpack we have Vigilance for the 25% increased weapon damage and we also want to be using the Fox Spray and knee pads for the 12% damage targets out of cover as well as the 10% rifle damage that has as a brand set and the Contractor's Gloves for the 8% damage to armor. Overall we're using one Walker Harsh piece for the 5% weapon damage, one Cesca Viroba for the 10% critical hit chance, one Provident Defense piece for the 10% heads of damage. Ideally, you will want the Provident Defense piece to be the backpack and that backpack should be the named version of the Provident Defense backpack called the Gift, which will grant you the perfect vigilance. We're also using one Group of Sombra for the 15% critical hit damage. And then we have, as I told you, the Fox Prayers, which is an overload piece and gives us 10% rifle damage, as well as the Contractor's Gloves. If you don't have the Contractor's Gloves, you can always change to a second Walker High Speed which will grant you 5% damage to armor instead of 8 that the Contractor's Gloves do. All of the core attributes are of course weapon damage and the rest of the attributes on my build are critical hit damage and critical hit chance. In total we have 49.1% critical hit chance and 173.6% critical hit damage. You will notice that in all three of my builds I have around 45-49% to of critical hit chance and that's because it's very likely someone from our group will be running with a coyote mask which will give me an extra 10% critical hit chance most of the time helping me reach the cap at 60% so I thought that if I had already 55% or 6% of critical hit chance I would be wasting an attribute slot. Specialization wise I always like to go with a demolitionist on legendary missions because it grants me immunity to one explosive attack every minute. And in legendary missions with the grenadiers and the explosive drones and things like that you know how it can be, it gets really hectic at some times. Moving on to the second build, yes this is a Seeker Mines sticky bomb build for legendary strongholds. Now before you leave the video, look at this. And this and this. So we have established that this is actually a very powerful build. You can get some insane damage numbers if you use your skills right. So let's get right into it. So 
the sticky bomb as well as the secret mines do explosive damage. So as you see, I'm using two group of sombras for the 15% explosive damage and the 15% critical hit damage which will help with my capacitor. I'm also using one China life piece which will give me an extra 15% explosive damage and then we get 10% more explosive damage from the demolition specialization. I'm also using three Empress International pieces for 10% skill damage and 10% skill efficiency as well as the battery pack backpack which comes with the perfect calculated talent which reduces my skill cooldowns by 15% for every kill I get behind cover. For that reason all my gear modes instead of being skill haste are critical hit chance and critical damage at least the ones I could recalibrate. You will see however that I'm going with a mix of critical hit damage, critical hit chance, skill haste and skill damage. We have a little bit of everything. My chest piece has the glass cannon talent which amplifies my damage by 25% but it also amplifies the damage I take by 50%. So we need to be extra careful and clever when using this build. The only reason I actually think that it's okay to use glass cannon with skill builds is because our main source of damage output is not our weapon. So we can spend quite a lot of time behind cover and still be outputting great amounts of DPS. Lastly, my weapon is of course the capacitor which benefits from the skill tiers. For each skill tier, my capacitor gets 7.5% weapon damage, so even though we're running 6 yellow cores, it's like we also have 3 red cores. Keep in mind that the capacitor also gives you an insane skill damage boost when you have all 40 of its stacks. The stats for this are 44% critical hit chance and 102% critical hit damage with 5 skill haste attributes, 5 skill damage attributes and the rest being critical hit damage and critical hit chance including the gear mods. My cooldowns are I think around 17 seconds for the sticky bomb and 26 seconds for my seeker mines. However, you will see that with calculated those two are much lower in reality. You can get your seekers back in like 15 with 18 seconds and your sticky bomb back in like 8 to 10 seconds most of the time if you're actually using your seekers and your sticky bomb the right time. Overall a super fun build with truly amazing damage. By yourself you can reach numbers like 12 to 30 million per sticky bomb and 5 million per seeker but with overcharge from someone in your group or Scorpio or any other support buffs you can sticky bomb people for even up to 20 million damage which is insane. Moving on to the last build this one was a little tricky to be honest because I decided to try out a build which I've been thinking of trying for quite a long time. I wanted to get as much damage to armor, damage to health and damage to out of cover in one build as possible and see how that would work out. It turns out it works quite good. It's definitely not as good as a negotiator's dilemma build for example but it is a good legendary option in my opinion. First of all, this build uses two weapons. Both of our weapons in this build are equally important. The Pestilence, when there are a bunch of NPCs running around and the Famas for when you want to do health damage. Pestilence comes with 6% damage to armor and 12% damage targets out of cover. Because we're using three Walker Harris pieces, the Contractor's Gloves as well as the Fox Sprayers, we have in total 19% damage to armor, 20% damage targets out of cover and 5% damage to health with the Pestilence. So the Pestilence obviously it's going to be more effective when we're going against enemies with armor. On my Famas, I have 21% health damage and 12% damage targets out of cover, which means we have a total of 26% damage to health, 13% damage to armor, and 20% damage targets out of cover. Damage to health could be increased even more if I use the Hollow Mask, which comes with an extra 10% damage to health, but I decided that it wasn't really worth it. For those of you who don't know how damage to armor and damage to health work, Damage to health is useful when you're shooting at targets without the white bars above their health. So damage to health is beneficial to us when we're shooting at red enemies or purple and yellow enemies that their armor is already gone. However, what makes damage to health actually a very important attribute is that it also benefits us when we're going up against dogs and Tsangas. Tsangas are the fat guys with the miniguns in case you don't know. These guys because they don't have a white armor above their health, all the damage you do to them is damage to health. So if you want to be able to take down dogs and Tsangas as fast as possible, you need to stack as much damage to health as possible. 
For missions like District Union, where there are plenty of dogs and tangas, damage to health is quite important. Damage to armor, on the other hand, is important for enemies with white bars above their health, so pretty much most of the NPCs. The build consists of three Walker Harness pieces for the 5% weapon damage, 5% damage to armor and 5% damage to health, one group of Sombra for the 15% critical hit damage, the Contractor's Gloves which give me both 10% LMG damage which helps with my pestilence but also the 8% damage to armor, and the Fox Sprays for the 12% damage to targets out of cover. The talents I'm using are the Glass Cannon and the Vigilance. Pestilence has a 44.4% critical hit chance and 143% critical hit damage and its debuff hits all the way for 1.3 million per tick. In some parts of the gameplay I'm showing in the background, you might be able to notice that I'm having max stacks, almost max stacks on two Tsangas with my Pestilence. One Tsanga is getting hit for 1.2 million per second from the debuff and the other one for 700k or something like that. So even on Tsangas, the Pestilence could be quite important and could be very fun to use. I was just messing around testing how much debuff damage I can get and I think that was the highest almost 2 million or something like that. However, if you're gathering stacks only in one enemy, the highest I could possibly go with this build was 1.3 million. The Farmers on the other hand has 51.4% critical hit chance and 153.8% critical hit damage. It's the Burnout which means it has the perfectly on empty talent giving me plus 40% weapon handling after reloading for, from empty for 10 seconds. The reason I decided to go with the Burnout and not the normal Farmers is pretty simple. Since I will be using the Farmers only on dogs and tangas, I want to be as accurate as possible so I can hit as many of my shots as possible so I can kill them as fast as possible. A lot of people would argue that if I had Optimist or Strained or something else in there, it would have been a better choice. However, having to choose between hitting most of your shots and having an average amount of damage per shot or having a very high amount of damage per shot but hitting around 65% of my shots, I will always go with the first option. Hitting all of your shots is far more important and useful than hitting half of them even if those half have a little bit higher damage. So the plan is pretty simple when I'm using this build. I'm using the Pestilence or normal NPCs and the Farmers on Dogs and Tangas. And as you can see from the gameplay, it works quite well in my opinion. Specialization wise, you can't go wrong with Demolitionist who will make you immune to one explosive attack once every minute as we already discussed. So that's it pretty much guys, those were the three builds, all three of them were tested on quite a few runs and I had fun and I consider all three of them to be quite good to use on legendaries. So with that being said, I want you to keep in mind that tomorrow with title update 16 coming out and with the reworked on striker as well as the pickers holster coming to the game, I'm pretty sure that new metas will be formed very quickly. I, my guess is that the new striker is going to be the new red DPS meta and the Picker's Holster will be in every skill slash hybrid build, so the metas will be changed over there as well. I will cover both of those changes, I will cover the new meta and all those kind of things, as well as create new legendary builds with the new items that we're going to get in the game. So if you don't want to miss that out, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye-bye.